Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. This one's going out to our pal Jerry Campbell Greer, who says, I look forward to every episode of this awesome show. We look forward to you watching it, and this rundown is all yours. Breath of the Wild is getting even bigger and more wild this summer. Nintendo has detailed what's included in the first of two big expansion packs. The biggest addition is a lengthy new challenge called Trial of the Sword, which is basically an extended shrine challenge where you'll take on loads of enemies in 45 different rooms. The thing that sets it apart from other challenges is that Link will be stripped down to his underwear and won't be able to take in any armor, equipment, or weapons, so you'll need to rely on your skills. This is very similar to the very difficult Eventide Island Shrine quest in the main game, and if you're able to finish it, your reward is that the Master Sword will become a lot more powerful and will glow all the time. If you want to make the game even more challenging, DLC Pack 1 also includes the new Hard Mode, allowing you to replay the game with stronger enemies. For you explorers, there's a new map feature called Hero's Path, which shows the path you've taken through Hyrule for the last 200 hours of gameplay, which should be the entire game unless you've spent way too much time with it. Nintendo hopes this will help illustrate where you haven't been yet, making it easier for you to explore places you might have missed. They're also adding a new item called the Travel Medallion, which lets you register your current location as a fast travel point and then warp back to it instantly, similar to the Magic Mirror in previous games. Speaking of previous games, DLC Pack 1 also includes loads of new items based on older Zelda titles, including the new Phantom Armor inspired by Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, and the skin-tight Tingle outfit based on everyone's favorite side character from Majora's Mask. The powerful Majora's Mask itself is also being added to Breath of the Wild, along with Midna's helmet from Twilight Princess. Finally, the last addition in DLC Pack 1 is the new Korok Mask, which notifies you whenever you're near a hidden Korok Seed. Since there are a whopping 900 Korok Seeds in the game, that should come in handy. There's never been a big DLC expansion like this for a Zelda game, or any Nintendo title for that matter, so we're curious to see how Nintendo handles it. The even bigger second wave of DLC, which adds new story content and a new dungeon, will arrive this winter. After years of waiting, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse are finally riding back onto other game machines. Following a premature leak by Amazon last night, developer Gunfire Games has officially announced Darksiders 3, an all-new game in the Sinful Action series. It takes place shortly after the events of 2012's Darksiders 2, with players continuing their quest to slay the biblical Four Horsemen in a post-apocalyptic version of Earth. Like the first two games, this one will be open world, with exploration and puzzle solving mixed in with the godly combat. It's good to see the Darksiders series still alive and kicking. The franchise almost met its end when original publisher THQ went under in 2013, but thankfully the rights to Darksiders and many other THQ games were picked up by a different company called Nordic Games, which has since changed their name to THQ Nordic. Developer Gunfire Games was founded in 2014 by members of Darksiders 1 and 2 developer Vigil Games, which, because it was a subsidiary of the original THQ, was forced to close its doors in 2013. They recently released the remastered editions of the first two Darksiders games on current-gen systems, but Darksiders 3 will be the first all-new game in the series since the new studio was founded. The game will hack and slash its way onto the PS4, Xbox One, and PC next year. It looks like James Bond is about to get back in action, but he might be doing things a little differently this time around. We still don't know if Daniel Craig will be back for the upcoming 25th 007 movie, but we might be getting a better idea about who will helm the film. IndieWire reports that the producers are looking at Scottish filmmaker Paul McGeegan to direct. He's helmed several films in the past, including 2015's Victor Frankenstein, but he's mostly known for directing episodes of TV shows like the BBC series Sherlock and the Marvel Netflix series Luke Cage. Hiring a lesser-known filmmaker to helm the new Bond movie would be a change of pace for the series. The last few films were helmed by big name directors like Sam Mendes, so a different kind of director could bring a different style and tone. In any case, if they're close to hiring a director, it indicates that they're inching closer and closer to a start of production, which means we'll likely find out soon if Daniel Craig will be back or not. We'll let you know when official announcements are made. Production on new Hollywood TV shows and movies won't be delayed for now. The Writers Guild of America has reached a new contract deal with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, narrowly avoiding a writer's strike that would have begun today. As part of the deal, writers will now get higher minimum pay as well as better health care benefits and parental leave for the first time. If the writers hadn't reached a deal with the studios, the strike would have basically halted production on new movies and TV shows, causing a vacuum in new content like the one that happened after the 2007 writer's strike. Some of the specifics in the new deal still have to be finalized. 
And speaking of writers, it looks like game maker Valve doesn't have much to write home about anymore. Valve's Chet Falasek, who co-wrote Half-Life 2, Left 4 Dead, and the Portal games, has left the company after 12 years. In a statement published by GameIndustry.biz, Falasek says there's no drama in his decision to leave Valve, he just wanted a change of pace. We can't help but wonder if there might be some drama, though. Falasek isn't the only writer to have left Valve recently. Half-Life's other writers, Mark Laidlaw and Eric Wolpaw, also left in the last year. This means that all of the big writers on the Half-Life franchise are no longer at the company, which doesn't bode well for the idea that Valve might be secretly working on Half-Life 3 or other new games in the series. As a whole, Valve hasn't been making as many games as they used to, with their last big release being Dota 2 in 2013. They've instead been focusing on their very lucrative Steam platform and releasing paid content for free-to-play games. Valve has created some of the best games ever made, so we hope they haven't given it up. That's our rundown for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new one. In the meantime, get caught up on lots of other EP content, will you?